Hi guys, thank you very much for joining and welcome back. And if you're just joining, you're more than welcome to go and have a look through the videos that are on the channel at the moment. I do have more. I've had to temporarily take them down. They should be back up as long as I can solve a problem that's been ongoing for a good few weeks now. Please subscribe and put your notification bells on, you know, just for when that happens. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. My last three videos are part one, two and three. And I guess Yes, I'm trying to show you how it came around that Darren Nichols is actually a liar and from the documents I have I was just I think I'm just trying to show you how it all panned out in court and you know the reason behind the the rumor and the theory that he is in fact a liar a fabricator and a little rat but I can't emphasize more that these are just my thoughts and theories and the way I feel about this man after reading what I've got in front of me. I'm not trying to persuade you. I'm not trying to persuade you that this is the truth and you know you have your own thoughts and feelings and I'm just sharing how I see it that's all. I welcome comments from people who do have a difference of opinion. I would actually love it if somebody came up and maybe did a series of videos to look through about why they believe Mick and Jack are guilty. I'm interested in all angles of this story, but what I'm not interested in is arguments. I prefer to hear from people who know the difference between an argument and a debate. And in fact, I'd like to do some work with anybody who believes Mick and Jack are guilty so if there is anybody out there who firmly believe Mick and Jack are guilty and want to do a bit of work together I'm all for that I think that should actually make a good video with some good content it would make a very good discussion I believe anyway as you know I haven't been around for a while and before I left it was about what three um, a month ago uh, I left and I've been absent uh, before I left I promised to do a shout out to a galactic 73 he's also on YouTube and he's also doing some of his own videos on the Essex boys case he's got some good content going on there and I know people like these uh, Facebook groups and I believe that he's got one so please go and have a look at his videos and join his group I'm sure he won't mind I'm sure he won't mind me forwarding his details and I'll tell you that with his permission of course. I understand that this Essex Boys case does create a lot of interest and I invite you to make your own videos as well. We can all help each other out but so far Galactic 73 is the only person that I find is actually recommendable at the moment for unique content in my last video part three i said i'm going to go through the darren nichols trial points so as i've got a bit of time i'm just going to sit here and go through it so immediately there he says everything i've told you about your inquiries is absolutely true you know and that's a quote by nichols now you know obviously this he may be telling the truth but as far as i can tell he hasn't been telling the truth so already right at the top on the 20th of the 5th 96 he's lied about telling the truth how ironic is that and uh, obviously there he goes on to say Nichols remarks the more illegal the better I'll tell you what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go I'm gonna pull up that transcript right okay so time and time again we've heard about this phone call between Darren Nichols and DC Bird so to save any confusion let's might as well just go through this okay so this is the transcript of the phone call between bird and nichols as you can see and it's police exhibit number djm 1a as you can see here it's titled transcript of tape from recorded system operating on extension 63435 at braintree police station so it's recorded from the police station. Is that that's phone? So they've tapped the phone. So all the all oh right. Okay. So in my last video, I said it, it's uh, evidence of phone tapping, but all organisation and the police they they record the messages, don't they? So so this is a recording of the phone message. So DC Bird has phoned Nichols from the police station and they're talking about 
corrupting uh, they're, they're talking about corruption and they're talking about fitting these people up so dc bird must have felt pretty safe that he could talk about corruption on the phone while sat at his desk probably talking to nichols it's dated the 10th of the 5th 96 and the time is 4 11 and it says the tape was removed on the 11th of 5th 96 right so this is four days before they were arrested for the drug smuggling right so it says that the call commenced at uh, 1721 on the 10th of the 5th 96 10th of may 1996 nichols hello bird hello nichols all right you can save money ring me at home if you want bird oh it's the firm's phone nichols oh all right then um yeah he popped round. he wanted uh let me just see if i can try and sit down without the phone being cut off S still there bird i'll call you at home if you're worried about that yeah five five one four three oh yeah i'll ring you all right i'll ring that call concluded okay so this is the second one and again it's from the recording system at braintree essex right so this is an outgoing call and it commenced on the 7 uh 521 on the 10th of 5th 96 nichols hello bird yo nichols um yeah he popped round he wanted to basically um uh, by the way you don't know this drag is sold all right bird right nichols because google has got it in his head that like we put it in there for 36 bird yeah nichols and he just said i'd give you three grand cash and i've had it in the paper three weeks bird yeah nichols do you know what i mean so what do you you sell it don't you bird exactly nichols i don't know how baldian looks on this he rung me up earlier bargain and went well if he makes profit we'll sell it if someone offers you three and a half bird yeah nichols take it bird laughing three and a half is he taking he hasn't sold cars before has he nichols no i said to him well i said well at the minute i'm looking at a profit and like it cost two six spent 64 pound on adverts and bird yeah nichols and sell it for three grand that a hundred and you know 80 odd quid each bird exactly nichols which is bird that's a profit nichols yeah he only wants it to send abroad anyway bird does he nichols yeah bird ah nichols um it's only going to get used once bird right nichols it's just for running some dough abroad bird some dough nichols money yeah bird all oh, right nichols so that's for the next time the biggie bird yeah nichols but his other pals are still they're down abroad they're still down in other worlds of the world bird are they nichols and uh they apparently will be back up tuesday because they are now in possession of what they want bird yeah nichols they're coming back bird right nichols and um because he told me I'm trying to use different vehicles for everything. He said, because the amount of times like um, Jack has um, Bird, yeah. Nichols, use the same motor to pick the gear up off the beach. Bird, yeah. Nichols, he said he was thinking about using a different motor and all that. Bird, right, oh, that's good. Oh, right. So, really, all I've got to do is steal that car when it goes abroad next time and keep the loot this is a copper talking nichols that wouldn't be a fucking bad idea would it bird no nichols that would be a bloody good idea wouldn't that be nice between us bird yes nichols it would be like a hundred and something odd thousand pounds no it would be more than that actually no it wouldn't it would be about 150 grand i reckon bird mm. nichols it buys a lot of gear down there where they're going bird yeah exactly nichols no it would be more than that i reckon they're paying seven and a half this time they said bird mm. 
Nichols speaking to someone else. Go and watch the telly. I'm talking. Hang on. What do you want? Is there any check? I don't think there's a. I don't think there's any on. Well, go around the shops and get some. We'll go around the shops when I finished on. Go on. Okay, go on, good girl. Oh, so he's talking to, I think he's talking to his daughter there. Yeah, talking to Bird. Uh, so, oh yeah, okay. Right, yeah, so he's talking to his daughter there. Yeah, talking to Bird. So, um, he wants to borrow my Land Rover to put his boat in. Bird, all right, Nichols. Sometime next week, doesn't matter. This time really, does it? Sometime next week, doesn't matter this time really, does it? Bird, no. Nichols, just thought so... Nichols, just a thought. Don't think I'll bother to tell you. Bird, no. Nichols, get the urge to catch someone. Bird, no, 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 no. Let it run, because you'll have a little bit of play around here anyway. Nichols, oh yeah, I'll oh, blimey. You'll be able to get loads of people who get some. I'll dish it out like sweets. Laughing, so as long as you pay for it. Nichols, well, I'll make sure I get cash before I tell you. So, Sorry, that's, uh, oh yeah, oh blimey, you'll be able to take, okay, that's Bird laughing, so long as you paid for it, Nichols, well, I'll make sure I get cash before I tell you, Bird, exactly, Nichols, I can't afford to lose, I don't know, I suppose there's always the fact that I could go back and say to him, look, someone took this and got nicked, Bird, yeah, Nichols, what do you want me to do? Chase them around for this money? Bird, hmm, Nichols, I could always play that on him, you know? Bird, yeah, that's true, Nichols. In fact, I could even do that, even if they did pay me. Bird, exactly, I was just thinking that, yeah, it's laughing. Nichols, because he can't say a lot. Bird, no. Nichols, because, like, he can't exactly say, let's go and get them. Bird, no, Nichols, no, they're on remand. Is he talking about Mick and Jack here? Because Mick and Jack, they got arrested for the Doug Cannabis, didn't they? So are they are they on remand at this point? They, no, no, that was way... No, the Doug Cannabis deal was before the murders, weren't it? Bird, how many people go driving abroad with cash then? Nichols, only two. Bird, yeah, what, they leave it in the car or do they go... Nichols, they leave it in the car. Bird. Good grief, that's very remiss of them, isn't it? Nichols, yeah, they used to carry it on, you know, used to get it out of the boot, and then they decide that it's probably worse walking around with a couple of hundred grands like a dickhead in suitcases on a boat and just leave it in the motor. Bird, yeah, Nichols, which is a shame, if you know what I mean. Bird, exactly, it's a shame you haven't kept a spare key. Nichols, oh fuck me, I'd get into it. Bird, it would be better with a key, because all you would have to do is drive on with them. Make sure you follow them somewhere near them. You hang around when they go up deck, and you hang around a bit. Nichols, yeah. Bird, swap one boot into the other, and just drive off with them at the same time. Nichols, pretty sad people they'd be. Bird, yeah, they wouldn't want... They, they would, wouldn't they? Nichols, pretty sad. Bird, yeah, and then you just... Nichols, well, that's going to be a couple of weeks away. I'm sure I could get the... I'm sure I could get the key back for some reason. Bird, or a similar one, if they've got the papers. You just get one. Nichols, I've got the documents. Bird, it's worth thinking about, isn't it? Nichols, worth making dough some way or another. Bird, yeah, that's right. Nichols, he'd never know where to look if that happened. Bird, no. Nichols, he would, but it wouldn't be me. Bird, no. Nichols, he'd be looking all around. Bird, exactly, he wouldn't look at you, would he? No, because he wouldn't know anything about it. Bird, no. Nichols, I don't get involved. He wants to borrow my Land Rover Tuesday or something to put his boat in. Bird, right. Nichols, said he's fed up with seeing his high looks. He is talking about Mick. Bird, now there's somebody called, there's some, the firm, unfortunately, I haven't got the name of them yet, they're looking at somebody at Clacton, they're following him around at the moment, something named, um, old Daly, a bloke called Daly, Nichols, oh yeah, Bird, do you know him, Nichols, no, Bird, oh, he's from Clacton, I got concerned that some other firm 
had got hold of Mick or something, but they're looking, the bloke there looking at it is called Daly Nichols. It's not Peter, is it? Bird. Uh, I don't know. I could find out, but it's Clapton Way. Nichols, yeah. Bird. Why do you know him? Nichols. Well, no, if his first name's Peter. Bird, yeah. Nichols. If then Peter works for Mick, Bird, right, he's the one of the dickheads that do a bit of driving. Bird, really, ah. Nichols. But I can't see it if it's Peter. Do you know what I mean? I'm pretty sure it ain't Peter because I've heard his last name and I'm sure it ain't Daly. Bird, no. Nichols, no. Bird, I mean, that's only because Daly stick in my mind because of Arthur. Arthur Daly. Nichols. I'll tell you what I could do. You could hang up the phone. I'll ring him up and say a geezer's coming round here. Said there's a geezer down your way called Daly who's got some gear. Do you know him? I could ring him up on his mobile now and ask him. Bird, all right, yeah. Nichols. Got a mate round here. Said someone called Daly is offering a bit of gear. Up, do you know him? If you ring back in literally one minute, not two hours like you normally do. Bird, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nichols, just one minute, yeah? Bird, okay. Nichols, I'll ring him. I'll ring him right this second. Bird, all right then, bye. Nichols, bye. Call's concluded. Right, I was getting a bit confused there because if you remember in part three, there's a bit in there where he's saying that he's trying to fit up, I think it was Mick and John Donnelly, wasn't it? Mick and John Donnelly, um, it mentioned co-eds, doesn't it? He's trying to fit up Mick and John Donnelly. But this phone call between Nichols and Bird is because of the, because it says the Hilux there, Mick had a red Hilux. And if you remember, the Hilux was used in Nichols' statement under oath. Mick was driving the Hilux to the halfway house. And, well, that's what Mick drove to the halfway house. His red Hilux. I'm not sure I understand this phone call very well, but I suppose that's obvious because I don't know any of these people. But as far as I can gather, they're here. They're, they're trying, they're setting up somebody and they're set as far as i can gather they're they're talking about setting up mick i don't know where this 250 grand's come from that is not from mick as far as i can tell it would be interesting to find out how much that uh, the cannabis somebody's going abroad with 150 grand in the boot of their car and these two people nichols and bird are planning to rob it i uh, just can't tell whether it's Mick who's going abroad with 150 grand and they're planning to rob Mick. Now that would be very interesting if they were trying to, if they were planning to rob Mick because that would kind of put it in perspective how much Nichols didn't want to be with Mick. So he's so Nichols is in there. He's working for Jack and Mick and he claims he doesn't like work for he doesn't want to work for them. So He's planning to rob them because he doesn't like them and he doesn't want to work for them. So he's planning to rob them out of spite kind of thing. You can see why people are really attracted to this lifestyle, can't you? They're talking £150,000 here and they're talking as if it's nothing. People are walking around with £150,000 in suitcases and they're leaving it in their cars. And... You know, £150,000. Imagine what you could do with that. But they're talking like it's nothing. And they're talking about just robbing it from the boot of a car. Like it's like, oh yeah, it's just something we do. £150,000, fuck all. If I personally was going to rob £150,000 off somebody, if I was that way inclined, I would plan it. I would, that, I would use that money to set me up for something good in life. That would be my, what, that would be the be all and end all of my criminal career that would £150,000 if I was going to rob it I would take it and I would I would use it and in, I, I, I could do so much with that it would sort out so many problems but these people are dealing in that they, they're, they're dealing in these figures 150000 a year 250000 500000 a million you know, a million's probably nothing to them. 
I read a story about Mick Steele being the pilot, and he was caught. I think no, he wasn't caught. He was. He, he bought in a million pounds worth of cannabis. It's in a book somewhere, and he, he, that's where he got his name, Mickey the Pilot, because he used to come in and out in his aeroplane with loads of one million pounds worth of cannabis. Can you imagine what you could do with a million pound? Maybe not nowadays. What can you really do with a million pound nowadays? You know, you could buy a house, a couple of cars, and you fit up quite nicely financially. But, you know, nowadays, as prices are going up and the booms, and you know, everything's getting more expensive, a million pounds is not going to go far, very far. But this, we're talking about 1995. A million pound, quarter of a million pound, 150,000 pound. For the for the dud cannabis deal, there was like a whip around and Pat Tate between Tony Pat and Craig, and they got together 70,000. Imagine nowadays just being handed 70 grand. It's a lot of money, and I think, my, you know, it's just they're not bothered by the amounts of money that is involved here. It's almost as if it's, 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 very, it's little to them, you know what I mean? And it's, you know, I could just rob that and they've got no care. It's like they've got no sense of what the amounts that they're robbing is or what they're dealing in. It's fascinating, that's the, the, it's fascinating to me that is, how there's so much money involved. They could do so much if they put it into the right things, but they continue to keep going on and on and on and on and it all just seems to disappear have you ever noticed that they're they're talking 150,000 pound in just this one tiny little conversation on the telephone but on a bigger picture on a broader scale one million two million this is just from Mick alone you know one million cannabis here there and everywhere you do that five times you've been dealing in five million pounds worth of cannabis Pat Tate, he was a, a massive dealer in ecstasy. Tony Tucker was probably a millionaire, but they all seem to be skint. They all seem to never. They always seem to need to whip round and get more money for a next deal. A business head should tell you if you get a hundred and fifty thousand pounds and plow it into your next deal and save it, you know, plow. The profits of that 150,000 into the next deal and then plow the profits of that next deal into your next deal and keep doing that you're gonna have 10 million 15 20 million in under two years if you kept doing that you know you double your money let's just say for example if you double your money of 150,000 pounds that's 300 grand you take that 300 grand and plow it into more business Okay, you double that, so that's 600 grand. And it's very quickly, on your third deal, there, you, you're making over a million. Your fourth deal, you're making two million, four million, eight million, 16, 32 million in under 10 goes. Well, obviously there's the thieves and the liars and where money is power and then with money, there's these thieves so you don't want to get too rich in this i suppose that is one of the major things isn't it yes they're dealing in drugs and there's massive money in this but there's also thieves and gangsters who are after your money so i suppose in a way you've got to keep it all quiet don't you you you're in that lifestyle where everybody's after money and if you can make 300 grand there you by all means do but you've got to watch out for the towns who are over there who have lost out in that th that 300 grand. It's a mad, mad thing. I'm fascinated by this. You know, I appreciate all gangster stories. I, I do like it. I'm not a gangster myself, and I've never been in a gang. I've never been into crime. But I love reading about it for some reason. I love the guts that it takes these people to do it. And the levels that they're doing is just immense. Because there are fellow humans. There are brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? There, there are fellow humans. And they're getting away with it. They've, did, they've had this idea that they're gonna go, they're gonna get into it like this. And they succeed really well. It just fascinates me. It's interesting. Pat Tate, a classic example of a robber. You know, he he, he made it his business at one point 
to go and rob other drug dealers. So that's a prime example of people trying to rob your money if you've got it. Okay, so we move on now. This is the third phone call. This is, this is the third of four phone calls, by the way. And uh, again, it's tape recorded at the police station. It's between Bird and Nichols, and it commences on the on at 5.30 on the 10th of the 5th, 96. Nichols, hello, Bird, hi. Nichols, no, wrong firm. Bird, good. All right, so now he, he's replying. So, right, so this is like a minute after the last phone call, isn't it? Uh, so Nichols has gone off and phoned uh, whoever it was to ask him if he knows somebody called Peter Daly. And uh, Bird's phoned him back. Nichols like, no, wrong firm. Bird, good. Nichols, he said, unless he's getting a bit off Pete. Bird, yeah. Nichols, he said, but I've never heard that name before. Bird, all right, fine. Nichols, Pete only got rid of um, conversation. Pete, um, conversation Pete, got rid of something like seven key in two months. Bird, all right. Nichols, I don't somehow think it's gonna be Bird. No, fine. Nichols, geezer's not gonna like crop up as a major. Bird, old, um, the other Mick has been talked about recently. I don't know if you've heard anything about him. Old Donnelly, oh, here we go. So, yeah, so this is uh, Mick Donnelly. Nichols, keep him. My mate said, like, fuck him. Bird, yeah. Nichols, because he didn't want to get back to him, you know. Rung him a couple of times, said yeah, he'll be back on to yeah, uh, yeah, no problem. The only thing I can do there is go for his brother John. I mean, I spent a bit of time with him, 18 months. So he's talking about being in prison with this guy here. So John Donnelly, Pete did Darren Nichols was in prison with him for that 18 month stretch. With that for that 18 month stretch, and that's at the point at the same time that he met Pat Tate. Bird, yeah. Nichols, so bird. Ah, uh, there must there seems to be something not happening along there, just that's another thing. Nichols. Hey, you know anyone wants a couple of pints of BMK? BMK is that be benzyl methane ketone, isn't it? As we learnt in part three. Bird, yeah, well yeah, well, Nichols, just a couple of pints. Bird, is that all? Nichols. Oh, it's mad, but believe it or not, my mate's dad got him some oil drums. Bird, yeah. Nichols, to keep diesel in, and they were BMK, Kodak, BMK drums. Bird, right. Nichols, and he said they had a couple of pints left in the bottom. Bird, uh, Nichols, I said there might be a use for it. Bird, um, yeah, trouble is, too small to make it any viable trip, isn't it, really? Nichols, yeah, you need a gallon to make five key or something, don't you? Bird, yeah, exactly, yeah. Nichols, oh, well, I'll say to him, have a word with your dad. He reckons his dad's too honest. Bird, well, to be honest, that might be an in way to get hold of uh, Mick, wouldn't it? Nichols, could be, I'll have a word with him. Well, to be honest, that that might be an in way to get hold of Mick. I still don't know who they're talking to. They're not. It's either Mick Donnelly or Mick Steele they're talking about there. Uh, could be. Uh, I'll have a word with them. Bird. Yeah, just say, look, I know it's a couple of points, but you've got any more. It's a little bit to add to, isn't it? Nichols. Yeah, it could be a good idea. Might as well be able to sell it. Might even be able to sell it. Bird, yeah, yeah, that's right. You might get a couple of hundred quid for it or something. Nichols, I could make some money out of it. Bird, yeah, all right, good. Oh, Nichols, I'll go for John then. Bird, all right, Nichols. Indecipherable, been printed, haven't they, heavily. Bird, yeah, Nichols. It's got to be John that gets it for him. Bird, yeah, Nichols, because this geezer works in the print and he's actually come home with like a 40 gallon drum. Bird, yeah, well they, Nichols, with a slop in the bottom. Bird, yeah, I mean, well, they don't use, no, they don't use it in that, in printing particularly. Nichols, this geezer works for some sort of printing type company in London. Bird, yeah, Nichols, he's like a plant manager, goes around making sure everything's okay. Bird, yeah, 
nickels but what do they actually use it for well what do they actually use it for because he had a kodak 40 gallon of it well empty drum he got an empty drum it had a splosh in the bottom but yeah uh, well i'd like to see what it says on the label nickels well that's easily sorted out but yeah see what the drum is because it might be an answer there nickels yeah bird yeah nickels because it actually does say on it bmk i haven't seen it my mate said it's bmk i said how do you know that then i said how do you know that then he said it says it on he says it says on it kodak something something processing and he said on it, it said blah 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 bmk bird hmm be interesting if it's the right stuff because i didn't I'd never known the use of that that nature before. Nichols, I thought it was used in photography. Bird, no, no, most of it's, well, basically, it's a very small, what, what do they call it? What do they call, um, regions? Nichols, oh yeah, bird, it's, it just starts, it just starts other experiments off. Nichols, yeah, bird. And occasionally it's sort of an industrial, well, like a cleaner of sorts, but not in huge, not in huge amounts. Nichols, yeah, bird. Cheap perf, cheap perfume, that sort of thing. I mean, if you bought 100 millilitres, you bloody, you know, it would last all year because you just dab dots of it. Nichols, not in my house, laughing in brackets. Bird, no, no, exactly not in your house, but find out. But if that's right there, could be that, could, that could be interesting if they use it in that sort of quantities. Nichols, yeah, well, it's two Kodak 40 gallon drums, he bought them home. Bird, fucking hell. Nichols, because Fran said he was after some places to keep his diesel and it was his wife's dad says. Bird, so long as it is. Nichols. I'll get you some drums from work and I'll get you some drums from work and he came home with these two 40 gallon Kodak drums, bird, mm, nickels, with BMK banged on the side of them, bird, mm, benzyl, methyl, ketone, nickels, I'll bear that in mind, bird, alright, yeah, check that, what are you doing over the weekend? Nickels, sod all, bird, alright, nickels, I've probably got to go Baldwin's tomorrow, I'm gonna have to wait and say, oh, Baldwin, they offered me three grand and I like, I think, oh, Bulgin, they offered me three grand and I think we should take it. Bird, yeah, Nichols. Otherwise, I can get the car back. Bird, yeah. Nichols, no problem. No problem there. They only want to drive it abroad in it. Bird, exactly, yeah. No, take the profit. Know what you say to Bulgin. Nichols. Well, I think I should have, because, well, I think I should, because, like, that would give me the rest of the money for the Berg wagon then. Bird. Yeah, exactly. All right, that's brilliant. That's good news. Something coming together. Uh, well, I'll be... I'm working all weekend. Nichols. What about the pond of things? What about the pond of things? I mean, surely... Bird. Yeah, we're looking at that. I'm going to have to do something on that. I'll talk to you off the phone tomorrow sometime. I'll find you tomorrow. And we'll have a chat. It'll be quiet tomorrow. Nichols, yeah. Nice, quiet day. Bird, hopefully. Nichols. I'm trying to get out of work for Richard Baldwin tomorrow. To be honest. Bird. Alright, well, 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 if you've got a spare or tell us where you are sometime mid-morning. Nichols, yeah, bird. Or what you're likely to be doing. Or what... Or what you're likely to be if you're running around doing the usual house things on a Saturday. Then don't bother, I'm working Sunday as well. Nichols. I'm not, I'm never a house, I'm, ne I'm never a house sort of person. Bird, alright. Nichols. We're decorating, we're, we're doing it, e we're doing it evening times because I'm giving up drinking. Bird, laughing, yeah. Nichols. I'm trying my fucking hardest. Bird, yeah. Nichols, tonight will be 96 hours. Bird, laughing. Nichols, or four days for anyone who can't do maths. I tell you what, I was in a bad mood yesterday. I was kicking plasterboard around the work. Bird, oh Christ. Nichols, I uh, thought, call blimey. Dal, 
I thought, cool, blimey, doubt you're an alky. So, like, I'm going to be, so I'm going to, the weekend's the worst after the weekend. I'm just, I'm going to join the gym. Bird, yeah. Nichols, but I thought, yeah, the weekends were the worst. Kills you the most, doesn't it? Bird, exactly. All right, boy, have, do your best. I won't talk about alcohol anymore because it just happened to have about 25 cases of cheap, strong lager. All right, boy. Have do your best. I won't talk about alcohol because I just happen to have 25 cases of cheap strong lager. Nickels, really? How much is this? No, no, I wouldn't sell it to you now anyway. Knowing what you've said. Nickels, no, no, I wouldn't drink it. I'd sell it on. But no, no, I don't think that's fair. Nickels, oh, it is. But I'll speak to you tomorrow. Nickels, if I can make money, how much is it? Bird. No, no, it's gone, it's sold. Nickel, gutted, alright then, I'll sell anything if you can get it. Bird, alright, Nickels, the more illegal the better. Bird, laughing. Nickels, alright, Bird, see you later. Nickels, I'll see you later, Bird, bye. Nickels, bye, bye. And the call's concluded. So Nickel there says the more illegal the better. In part three, if you remember, that was like a highlight of what was said in those points wasn't it there he says that there look the more illegal the better and they're just talking about alcohol there that's a bit weird so they're talking so th well, this is bird i mean this is how bent bird is look i mean it, this is a copper who's got 25 cases of cheap strong lager so he's importing but by the sounds of that you don't just go to a shop and buy 25 cases of cheap strong lager do ya I mean 25 cases that's a lot if you, if you think about it so this is a copper who seems to be doing one of those you know those tax jobbies the uh, the duty free kind of jobby Dowboy and Rodney off Only Falls and Horses type dealer but that is interesting how the more illegal the better actually comes after the conversation of just this little alcohol thing and that's interesting as well what about the pond of things i mean surely the, uh, i don't know if there's a typo there or what but the, talking about a pond here so it is this the pond that there he's he's done that cannabis in is that the pond is he talking about the pond of things there yeah, we're going to be looking at that and going to have to be something I'll talk to you off the phone. So he wants to talk off the phone about the pond of things. Now, as you know, the, there's that the, the Darren Nichols has dumped this dug cannabis in the pond and he gets and he gets rewarded for it, if you remember. So if they're talking about the, the pond of things here, they're setting up that find as well they're setting up his reward and what date is this it's the 10th now this if that is if they're talking about the pond that they set if the the he dumped the dug cannabis in and the one that he's rewarded for and they're setting that up on the 10th then we've got some interesting things going on here obviously there's no way of telling whether they are talking about the pond that he's dumped this cannabis in but if they are talking about that that is proof that he's lied that is absolute 100 percent proof that he's lied about that one particular thing so they all get arrested Darren Nichols then lays on the story. So they all get arrested on the, the 14th. Then he lays on the story that he knows where this Doug Cannabis deal is. And he gets rewarded for that. And this is after, I believe, Mick and Jack have been charged. So we're well into the court date now. And this is where Darren Nichols supposedly here over here is somebody and he gets rewarded for this but that to me is saying 
that he actually set that up. He set the whole finding the dead cannabis deal in that pond. Oh, it's a pit, isn't it? Shit, I forgot. Well, that was a waste of time. So what about the pond of things? I don't know anymore. Well, oh, forget that. Right, and so this is the, the fourth and final phone call between Bird and Nichols. Again, it's recorded at Braintree Police Station. It's off the same extension number. And it's, okay, the outgoing call time has not been recorded. Nichols, hello, Bird. Hello, it's me. Nichols, all right. Bird, I forgot to ask you if it's got it in hat. I forgot to ask if it's got it to hand can you fetch out that um uh, code number for the radio nickels i could do but i'm not at home now bird all right nickels but i can all i can do is get it to hand and i'll bird stick it on my pager nickels yep yeah. bird yep yeah. nickels as soon as i get in i'm just gonna go and See Trunley, cop some wages with a bit of luck. Bird, all right. Nichols, all right. Bird, right, great, thanks. Nichols, you'll know better in about an hour. Bird, all right, thanks. Nichols, okay, Bird, bye. Nichols, bye. See you later, bye. Call concluded. What? That's... The code for the radio? Wait a minute, have I, am I missing something here? Have I got my wires crossed or what? So this is Darren Nichols setting Mick and Mick up. The code for the number, the code number for the radio. Are they talking about the walkie talkies? Hang on a minute, I've got, I, I'm, so, I'm getting a bit lost now. If like, So Bird is asking Darren for the code number for the radio. Are they, t if they're talking about the, the receivers or the walkie talkies, that means that Darren Nichols has planned it all along. He's even planned the arrests. He's planned with this bird, the cannabis deal arrests. Have I lost the plot there? Am I losing, have, have, I, have I sort of missed something there? I know they were all under surveillance, but I've never thought that Nichols was involved in the setup of them being arrested. Has it always been that? I can't, th I, for, for the life of me, I can't think now. Has it always been that Nichols was gonna set up this arrest for the cannabis? I've always thought that they were under surveillance for this cannabis and Nichols got arrested and then he spills the beans and then that's where his, his lies start. He gets arrested, he wants to get off with the charge so he, he then turns super grass. But if he's been setting up the arrests that means Darren Nichols knew they were going to get arrested for the cannabis deal. I'm gonna have to ra I'm gonna have to rack my mind a bit. I'm gonna have to rack my brains a bit because that's just spam me out. I've never known. I've never thought was Darren Nichols involved in the arrests. I know he was arrested. I know, I know he was under surveillance, but that's setting that up. That means the police were involved in putting Darren Nichols in there. Oh my God. Right, if, if, of course, the code numbers for the radios are the walkie-talkies that they used on that drug deal, on that cannabis drug deal, then that means that Darren Nichols was involved in their arrests for that cannabis deal. And that means that the police knew that he was going to get arrested. That means that he knew they were setting him up. The, the, poli the police force and Darren Nichols knew that they were all going to get arrested. So I can't for the life of me think what that means. But as far as I can gather, as far as I can gather, 
Nichols, Mick, Jack, Tate and Peter Corey and Bridges obviously now, we know, were arrested for this cannabis. And then the lies started from Nichols to get off this cannabis. That's the way the story goes, isn't it? That's the way everybody knows it to happen. They were all under surveillance and they all got arrested for this cannabis. And then Darren Nichols starts to lie and he starts to fabricate this story that Mick and Jack were involved in the murders. But if this code number that DC Bird is asking him to get is from the radio receivers that they're going to be using for the cannabis deal, that means Nichols has been involved all along. Right, um, I was going to... I was gonna go through this, but I just have to stop tape and I wanna get my head straight about what that is. If that's right or not, I'll just need to go away and have a look at a few things. I've always thought that Nichols started this fabrication and this lie as he was arrested in the police cell. But this is suggesting that, okay, well, Okay, well, you know, let's look at this logically for a second. Okay, so that, that may not even be the radio, the code number for the radio for the CBs they're going to use, and I don't know. If the code number for the radio is for those that they're going to be using, that means that Darren Nichols was involved in the setup of them getting arrested, which I think is brand new. Nobody's even suggested that before, have they? I can't, I can't for the life of me think if that's right or not. Has it always been that Darren Nichols was involved in setting them up for the drug deal? I know he was involved in setting them up for the murders, but was he involved in the setup of the cannabis deal that they all got arrested for, including himself? That's, that's a new one that is. So anyway, in a nutshell, that's the, the I mean that that's the transcript of the phone calls between Nichols and Bird. I should have went I probably should have went through that well before now because it keeps popping up, doesn't it? There's a phone call and the, there's a there's a setup and they're setting up. And this is exactly what they said in those phone calls. You know, these two Bird, the, these this police officer and Darren Nichols are working together and this is the phone call and all phone calls that they're always referring to every time you hear that now you know exactly what was said but obviously I'm just reading it out so I've, and obviously I can't do their tones of voice I can't I can't imitate their voices what tone this conversation was said in so you know you, that will have to come out of your own mind and imagination so now we're going back to the trial points as we went through yesterday in part three uh, saying you know there there that's the phone calls basically so you know I'm quite glad that I've got that out there now because it actually starts to make sense you know these are the bird, bird phone calls Nichols remarks the more illegal the better right which actually you know they're actually talking about alcohol at that point. You know, that's quite interesting, that is, isn't it? The more illegal, the better. And they're actually having a discussion about alcohol. Does that, I mean, is that the more the more illegal, the better? Is that Darren Nichols saying, you know, the more illegal, the better? It doesn't matter. I, I want it proper illegal. Like, the, I don't care. I want it the, the more knocked off, the better. The stronger, the lager, the better. You know, that's his mindset, that's what's coming out to me, you know. I don't care about the law, I want it to be the most illegal beer there is. I want it knocked off, stolen, whatever it is, I'll drink it. The more illegal, the better. But he is talking about beer there, so sheds a bit of a different light, doesn't it? Also, during the same take, conspires to supply BMK. Right now, we, again, now we know it, it was just two pints of this ben benzoyl methyl keto, and yeah, there. So, so, and he's saying that that was a, a, a fit. 
that was an attempt to fit up their uh, previous co-eds or co-ds it says there Mick and John Donnelly obviously they've gone through this in a lot more depth than I have um, I personally didn't witness them I, I personally didn't witness any of that the conversation about benzo myth and ketone as an attempt to fit anybody up wasn't it that there was there was a barrel i thought it was mick and john donnelly the barrel of um the, the barrel there was a tiny bit in the bottom of, bar of a barrel anyway so this is going on to say that the same tape, once again, conspires with DC Bird to supply drugs to the general public, I'll dish out our sweets. Wasn't that in the first phone call? He says that in just passing, doesn't he? Hang on a minute. Yeah, right there it is. So, this is, so, what's he talking about there? So he's talking to his girl, to, so he's talking to his little daughter there, and he's saying that he wants to borrow the Land Rover to put his boat in. So I'm, I'm, I'm talking. I think he's talking about Mick and Jack there, because there's no other boat involved in this whole thing, is there, other than Mick and Jack? So um, he's saying, we. So Darren Nichols got a Land Rover, and Mick wants to use it to put his boat in. All right, so. Uh, sometime next week, just matter. I can't, I can't see what they're talking about here. So they're talking about a car. Uh, they're, they're talking about this 150 grand, and it buys a lot. It buys a lot of gear from where they're going. And I reckon they're being, they're, they're paying about seven and a half. They said this time. And he talks to his daughter, and then it goes on. Sometimes next week seems to that that, that sounds look. It seems to change the uh, the. It ch seems to change the subject. Okay, really, just sometimes next week. No. Just thought you don't bother you. No, uh, get the urge to catch someone. Just thought you think uh, I'd bother you to tell you get the urge to catch someone no 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 just let it run in course it's like a little play around here oh blimey oh blimey you'll be able to get loads of people you get I'll dish them out like sweets that well that's I can't personally I can't see anything I can't see that they're talking about drugs here not in the sense that these are talking here they, they're saying they conspires with DC Burt to supply drugs to the general public I'll dish it out like sweets that's not what I'm getting there that that doesn't say anything about dishing any drugs out like sweets that's a bit weird Right. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna sort of chop this up into a, a few more different videos so I've got something to talk about um, so expect them over the next week or so this I'll call this part one for now um, I hope you enjoyed that it gives you a good insight into what the phone call was actually said uh, what was said in the in that phone call between Bird and Nichols and I'm gonna continue to go through this but so far for some reason none of this in the trial points is actually suggesting that um, it seems like the trial points, even the defence for Mick, have actually got their wires crossed. It might even turn out that they're lying. <laughs> you know, this is like it's conspiring with DC Bird to supply drugs to the general public. Well, that might be a lie. No, because I can't see anything there that says that him saying I'll dish it out like sweets is conspiring with DC Bird to sell drugs to the general public. I can't see that in the phone call. Yes, he does say it, but it do to me it doesn't say that he's saying that he's going to dish it out to the general public. And it most definitely doesn't say that he's going to produce amphetamines. And, you know, as it goes on a bit later, it goes on to say that they're tried they're, they're going to be opening up a, an amphetamine factory 
in none of those phone calls does it say anything about a factory or conspiring to open a, an amphetamine factory. So it's interesting. This is interesting that it may actually be that this defence is wrong as well. Anyway. I love this story for the twists and turns that it takes and you know that's why I still love talking about it and I'm more than happy to share with you what I find and what I've got and long may it last. So that said thank you very much for joining I'll see you in the next video take care of yourselves guys.